Hey, I'm Org, and in this video I'm going to talk a bit about the upcoming line of Soviet cruisers. I'm sure you've all done what I've done here and come to look at Soviet tech tree and look at all these new ships, but unfortunately I don't have any of the statistics for these ships yet. However, they are on... Well, they are in the client, so using certain websites you're able to pull out some of the information about these ships. I'm just kind of going to go through them and talk a bit about how I think these ships will play. And I should also mention at the start that the statistics I'm going to talk about are still... Well, they're not finalised yet. Um, a few weeks ago, when the stats first came out, they were actually quite different to what they are now. So they could still change a bit in the future, but we'll just go through them. I'll work through from tier 2 to tier 10, just because, well, that seems the way you play through it. So we start off with the Novik, which was one of the more modern light cruisers that was involved in the Russo-Japanese War. It was actually stationed in the Far East, so it took part in the early battles of the war before um, the Battle of Tsushima but was heavily damaged and captured by the Japanese, where they eventually raised it and repaired it and put it into their service. Um, it actually looks a bit underwhelming to me in-game. Um, it's got the lowest hit points of all the Tier 2 cruisers. It does make up for that by having a very fast rate of fire from its 120mm guns. It has 8 in total for... should have 6 on the broadside, I thought. But I only see one, two, three, four. Huh. Okay, maybe it only has four of them on the broadside, so that's actually worse than I thought. Well, uh, the 120mm guns also have a very good chance of starting fires. However, the speed and maneuverability of this ship is average. Um, yeah. Uh, it seems to me like it would do a lot of damage to enemy ships, just with four guns firing very fast with a high chance to start fires with high explosive. But we'll probably take a lot of damage in return, and it won't be able to stand for fire under fire for very long. So, as I say, a bit underwhelming. At tier 3 we have the Bogatir. Um, I'm sure also say that I have no idea how to pronounce these Russian names, so I'm probably going to do it wrong throughout the whole video. Uh, the Bogatir was a contemporary of the Novik. They were four or five ships in the class. They fought in all the major Soviet conflicts of the early 20th century. Um, Russo-Japanese War, First World War, Civil War, and into the Second World War. Uh, yeah, they look to me in-game like they're going to be a heavier version of the Kohlberg or a lighter version of the St. Louis. Uh, the Bogatir does have thick armour but not as thick as the St. Louis, but it is thicker than the Kohlberg. It's also faster and more agile than the St. Louis, but is slower than the Kohlberg. The Bogatir gets a lot of guns on the broadside, eight by my count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guns on the broadside, so I got that right, either 152 or 130 millimeter guns. They actually fire slower than either the Kohlberg or the St. Louis, but they do have a very good chance of starting fires. So, I kind of expect this is going to just slot in well with the St. Louis or the Kohlberg. It's kind of an intermediary ship. It's going to have a lot of firepower. It's going to be well armoured, but kind of slow and basically kind of average for a tier 3 ship. At tier 4, we have the Svetlana. I always want to call it the Svetlana, but there's an I in its name, so I'm guessing it's the Svetlana. And yeah, looking at the ship, um, well they were kind of a 1910-ish design, they were designed to replace the losses in the Russo-Japanese War, uh, but unfortunately the construction was delayed due to the First World War and then the Civil War, so they didn't actually enter service until the second half of the 1920s. And uh, They actually seem roughly comparable to the Phoenix in-game. Um, if we got decent hit point pull and excellent armor, it does get torpedoes, the first Russian cruiser to get torpedoes, but they are very poor. I believe they only get a 5km range, and they're quite slow, so not that great. Um, I think the biggest weakness of this ship compared to the other tier 4 cruisers is that it actually gets poor turret traverse time, although it's only really got 
Well, three, I don't know, four, five turrets, so I suppose that is it. Oh, actually, they're all in turrets, mostly. So turret traverse run will actually be important. And it also gets a very poor rather shift time. However, it has a lot of guns on a broadside, and I probably should count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guns on a broadside. 130mm guns, so they're quite powerful. Um, and it's got a very fast rate of fire, so it should actually be a fairly powerful ship at tier 4. If it weren't for that slow rate of shift time, which has me a bit worried. At tier 5, we have the Kirov, which... Seems like a really interesting ship. Uh, these were the most modern cruisers available to the Soviet Union at the start of the Second World War. They well, what really stands about them about about them is their guns. They get 980 mm guns, um, which are actually roughly comparable to the 203 mm guns on the Furutaka. The Furutaka does slightly more damage with its shells. But the Kirov can fire three kilometers further and has better turret reverse time, um, as well as you know three more guns. Uh, the Kirov is also fast at 36 knots, but it is very poor in agility. It has a 10.2 second rudder shift time, which is a bit more suitable for a battleship or a high tier heavy cruiser, and an 860 mil meter turning radius. That means these ships will be vulnerable to torpedoes and gunfire at medium ranges. Is also poorly armoured and has low hit points. So really this ship seems to me that it will be absolutely devastating to your enemy, so long as they aren't shooting at you. But I think basically under fire this ship isn't going to last very long. It seems to be very much a support ship that's going to rely on a battleship or somebody else going forward to take the enemy fire. But otherwise it should actually be really good. At tier 6 we have the I'm going to call it the Buddyoni. Buddyoni, one or the other. Um, I wasn't actually able to find very much information about this ship project. I assume it was a proposal to update the Kirov, but was cancelled due to the Second World War. Uh, basically, the ship appears to me to be a more, well, a less powerful but longer range Cleveland. Uh, the guns on these ships are very similar. Uh, the buddy only gets longer range and better traverse time, and I also assume it's going to have a better fire trajectory than the Cleveland, um, which should balance out the fact that it gets three less guns than the Cleveland. Uh, the buddy only also gets better armor, although a lot less hit points. Um, it's also faster, but its agility is awful. 12.1 seconds rudder shift time means that this is actually going to be a hard ship to avoid fire in. So I think in some respects it's going to be a lot like the Kirov. You're going to do pretty good damage with these 952mm guns at fairly long range. But you really don't want to have the enemy shooting at you. You're a fairly weak target. At tier 7, we have... Well, sh Shores? Shores. Let's just call it Shores. Uh, this was a 1930s proposal for a light cruiser to serve alongside the Kirov. However, it was cancelled for a variety of reasons in favour of the Chapayev class. Um, it's the only non-premium light cruiser at tier 7, so there's no real comparison for the Shores. Um, it's almost what you would expect from a light cruiser. It has light armour, high speed, 12 rapid firing 152mm guns. However, it continues the poor agility trend of the Soviet cruisers. 900 meters turning radius and 12.4 second rudder shift time. It also gets a fairly low hit point pull, so I imagine it will be very vulnerable to enemy fire. Uh, just for comparison, the Pensacola is well known for being vulnerable to battleships. The Shores gets 25% thinner armor, 6,000 less hit points, and takes 3 more seconds to swing the rudder around, and turns a lot less tight. Uh, so again, like the Kirov, I think this is a ship that's going to rely on the enemy not shooting at it. At tier 8, we have the Chapayev, which that was a class of light cruisers that were being built uh, when Germany invaded, so the construction was actually delayed until after the Second World War. And it kind of formed the backbone of the second post-Second World War Soviet Navy, at least probably until the late 1950s, maybe even the early 60s, really. Um, in game, the cruiser actually seems like a weaker equivalent of the Mogami in its light cruiser configuration. 
The Chapayev has less hit points and slightly thinner armor than the Mogami. Uh, the Mogami is also faster and more agile while it gets three more guns. To counter that, the Chapayev gets a better rate of fire, a higher fire starting chance, and a much better turret reverse time. Uh, it also actually gets better AA guns, slightly better AA guns, although the AA guns on the Mogami are not great. And actually, I'll just mention at this point that all these cruisers actually have fairly weak AA guns. They're roughly comparable to what the Japanese have. So now it's... I think this ship has potential. Basically, I'm hoping it has very good firing arcs on its guns, so it can use armor piercing effectively. But otherwise, it just seems like a weak Mogami to me, which is kind of unfortunate. At tier 9, we have the Dmitry Donskoy, which is actually a bit of a change for the Soviet cruisers. Um, yeah, uh, this was a post-war project to build a commerce rating light cruiser. It actually seems comparable to the Rune, whereas up to this point I've kind of thought the nearest comparison for the Soviet cruisers was actually the Japanese cruisers. Suddenly they've switched to become more like the Germans, at least look at statistics. The armor is the same on the Rune as the Dmitry Donskoy, or practically the same. Um, the, the, the Donskoy here has slightly less hit points. Uh, the Dmitry Donskoy has the same guns as on the Kirov down at tier 5, except that they fire much faster now. And despite their small caliber, they actually have better high explosive damage than the Rune. Although the Rune does still get a slightly better rate of fire. The Donskoy is fast at 36 knots, and is actually slightly more agile than the Rune, which is a bit of a change for the uh, Soviet cruisers, although it is still much less agile than the Ibuki or the Baltimore. Um, I think this ship will actually be roughly comparable to the other tier 9 cruisers, probably playing a bit like a slightly lighter version of the Rune. And finally, at tier 10, we have the Moskva, or Moscow. We'll call it Moskva. Um, it's not the post-war proposal for a raiding cruiser. This one is much heavier than the Dmitry Donskoy. Uh, there are a few things that immediately jump out about this ship. First, it gets 220mm guns, which are the biggest guns on any cruiser currently in the game. Secondly, it gets 65,400 hit points which is a figure that is far more appropriate to a battleship than a cruiser. Thirdly, this ship is huge. Uh, there are screenshots online putting this thing next to a Yamato and saying that they're actually roughly the same size. Some people are even saying that the Moskva is actually slightly longer than the Yamato. Well, you see we can't fit it in screen easily. So yes, it's a very, very big ship. Uh, in many respects, it actually seems like a weak battleship rather than a powerful heavy cruiser. Um, it has heavier armor than the other cruisers, but it won't be sufficient to protect it from battleship shells. It has a 19.4 km range, which again is long for a cruiser, short for a battleship. Uh, it has slow rate of fire and a poor turret traverse, again kind of in between the heavy cruisers and the battleships. However, it gets a speed of 34 knots, which is decent. And its maneuverability is roughly comparable to the Hindenburg, so again, it's kind of similar to the German cruisers in that respect. And I think it will actually play very similar to the Hindenburg, where basically the one advantage, or the one significant advantage this gets over the Hindenburg is that it has better armor and high hit points. But I think that's actually going to be offset by the fact that this ship is just a massive target, and its citadel is going to be huge. And I think this is just going to be really... An experience sponge for um, battleship players. They'll look at this and think, you know, free free damage basically. But it's going to be powerful nonetheless. Big guns, lots of hit points, so it should be able to survive under fire for a long time, even if it won't survive all that long against the Yamatos. And it's fast, it's decently maneuverable, its AA guns are okay. Still not good, but okay. So yeah, it could be an interesting ship up in high tier gameplay. So anyway, that's kind of the Soviet cruisers. Um, you might have noticed that I'm actually not looking forward to these ships that much. Um, the Novik Bogatir Svetlana, tier 2, 3, and 4, they seem alright. I think the Novik is a bit underwhelming, but the other two seem perfectly average for tier 3 and 4. And they should be well enough to play. 
But tiers 5 to 8, I think these ships actually combine the worst features of heavy cruisers, in particular its um, poor agility, poor maneuverability, with the worst feature of light cruisers, which is their light armour, to get kind of ships that I don't think I'm actually going to enjoy that much. I've said many times that I think these ships will be very powerful, so long as nobody is shooting at them. And I just don't like playing them as passively as I think you will have to for the Cure of the Bugioni Shores and Shapayev. I might be wrong though, there are, it's said the statistics might change, and there might also be other things that aren't popping up, particularly the shell trajectory, which could radically improve, make these ships more powerful than I think they would be. It's at tier 9 and 10 that I think these ships get interesting, where they basically become a lot like the German heavy cruisers at that tier, where they get decent hit points, decent armour, powerful guns, and their actual agility and well, their maneuverability overall kind of catches up with their competition. But, yeah, see, I'm not really looking forward to these ships. I'm sure some people will love them, especially since they all seem to have very powerful guns. That seems to be the thing for these Soviet cruisers. They're powerful guns, but weak in other respects. So I'm sure lots of people will love them, but I don't really think they're the ones for me. So basically, at the moment, I'm thinking I won't really go up the Soviet cruiser line until I'm done with the Soviet destroyers, and as you can see... I've got a way to go with the Soviet destroyers. I'll buy the Dursky in a week or two, I think, but a while to go. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting and informative. Or tell me what you're looking forward to about the Soviet cruisers or if you're looking forward to them at all. And I'll see you all next time.